Yes, this simple vector cross product from chapter 1 of the math book changed my attitude towards the math. Previously, I was kind of forced to study math because people kept saying engineers and programmers need to be good at math. And now, I'm a big fan of math indeed because I feel like it's like a programming API or combo keys from the game, as I mentioned in the previous video. And I am not talking about the productivity to study math or so. Instead, today let me share how this simple vector cross product made me spontaneously study more math to make better robots. If you're new to here, my name is Elliot. I'm a robotics engineer, educator, and entrepreneur providing related services. Here's a drone that's peacefully taking off. And let me turn on the noise. Then soon, it falls. Obviously, it's because of the sensor noise. One of the issues with the sensor noise is the rotation matrix. Like I mentioned in the previous video, the autopilot computer calculates the rotation matrix based on the gyroscope sensor reading using the combo key called the exponential map. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, check out the link here. Now, in this case, these combo keys cannot handle the noise. This time, the level 1 boss to kill is called random walk in statistics. When you integrate the random numbers, the resulting signal drifts away from the zero. Due to the random noise from the sensor, even though the true signal is zero, the drone controller is vulnerable to the drift issue because the drone computer doesn't have any eyes. It only relies on the sensor, which has noise in this case. To win this game, the game of noise, in this case, the hint we got is on the drone, there is an accelerometer that measures the acceleration on the body frame and the gravitational acceleration, like this. And then the accelerometer on the body can measure this. In the small scale, we can safely assume that the ground is always flat and that this gravity vector is always perpendicular to the ground. Let's observe it. Here's the airplane. You can just think it as a drone or just a hovering aircraft. Then let me toggle this shell states. Then there's accelerometer value here. So it stays still like zero, zero, zero angle, no inclination here. And then accelerometer feels this number, which is just one G towards that direction. And then, if I move the airplane, as you can see, this acceleration on this body of the aircraft is changing because Y axis to the uh, right hand side, like a red, then this Y axis can feel now the portion of the gravitational vector as it tilts left and right. And then same for the other axis as well. Then try to rotate for Y axis, then the pitch up and down. Now X axis can feel the portion of the gravity. That's the body frame acceleration. So it's kind of easy to say that we know this gravitational acceleration vector for sure, but how do we actually use these to correct this drift error due to the noise? And that's a big question to me. And then uh, to tackle this, I was like implementing almost infinitely nasty if statements to divide the cases by axis and by angles. And then I realized I, I just can't do this anymore. There are lots of strategies to tackle this problem, but today let me choose the most simplest one because as I mentioned, this changed my attitude towards the math, the cross product, which repetitively comes out from textbooks but I didn't realize these uh, potential applications in the engineering problem. So according to this DCM paper, the solution was rather simple. The strategy they used is to compare the body frame acceleration with the actual gravitational vector because in terms of the body frame, your robot's body isn't tilt. Instead, the gra ground is tilt, just like this flight attitude indicator. So let's assume this rotation matrix is perfect. There is no drift or no noise, no nothing. And if this rotation matrix is perfect, we multiply this body frame acceleration to it, that it must be same as the gravitational vector because the drone is just hovering. And if they happen to be different, it must be coming from this rotation matrix and the rotation matrix has the error because of the noise, the drift problem. So we just need to calculate the difference between these two vectors. Then we will take the cross product. And the reason why we just don't subtract with these two vectors is because if we subtract them, the subtracted vector will be still on this plane. However, we want to correct this rotation matrix. So we want something about the rotation, the error of the rotation. We just simply take the cross product. And then as a result, you will have this cross product of it, which is perpendicular to these two vectors, which is the information about the rotation in your rotation matrix. And using this error rotation, you can correct 
this rotation matrix again. And then this is just one line of code. It's so simple. And this cross product seamlessly generalizes to 3D space. So you don't have to do anything, you just still use the same one line code that it just works in the 3D space. And this is why I think math is like an API. Instead of dividing cases and writing your new algorithm, you can simply apply your understanding of math, in this case, factor product. And this kind of practice is not only limited to robotics. For example, let's say you are a backend engineer working for an e-commerce website, and then you are given with this uh, order invoice, like customers submit the quantities of order and then prices for each product. And then simply to calculate the total price, you just need to multiply them and add them up like using this for loop. And then the total price is just sum of quantities and prices. But if you understand the dot product, which is the same operation like this, and then just use a dot product, which is just one line of code in this case. And then obviously the total price is the same. So really the math is like a programming API that you don't have to write many lines of code. It has simplified my work so much and then I become spontaneously study more math to simplify my codes more and more as a robotics engineer. So if you had a similar eye-opening moments about math like me, please share yours by coming down below because I'm really curious about your stories too. Well, uh, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. My name is Elliot. I'll see you soon.